Hi, this is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom, and today I'm going to show how to set up class folders and notebooks in a Google Drive. So to begin this process, first go to your Waffle and open up Google Drive. Now, if you're using your districts, it might look slightly different, but this is one that my district uses, so it should be common to everybody else. Go over to your plus button and hit new folder. If your folder, if your Google Drive is actually loading, it might take a moment or two for this actual pop-up to show. Now what I like to do is name my folders based on the class I'm taking and put the semester name number at the end of it. So this is for a US history class in the spring of 2024. When that folder is made, it'll go to the bottom of your drive alphabetically. Now, when I create new documents, I open this folder for this class every time. And for this one, you're gonna see that we're making a Google notebook. Now we're using Google Docs to do this. Now, since this document might be submitted at some point, I highly recommend putting a name on it that relates to the class. So I'm using my last name, two of my first letters for my, my first uh, name and underscore, and then USH for US history and the number 24. To begin this notebook, I'm, I'm showing or asking students to actually copy a piece from our class and show me that they can use uh, different font builders inside of Google documents. So what I'm asking them to do is copy the units of study and our monthly creativity topics and paste them into the actual Google Doc like this. So here I went back to the syllabus, copied and pasted what I wanted them to do, and then it's here. Now once it's in there, I want them to change the font not to a style but to actually a format. I want them to format it or paragraph format it a certain way. And I want them to do this with headings. And you're going to see why you would do this anyways later on. Now in heading two, in most documents, you have before and after paragraph spacing. I usually get rid of that, but I don't change the style because you never know when you might use it later on in the document. I just don't like it here in this spot. Again, applying heading two to these sets of lines. Again, going to the, par to the, to the line spacing, removing the before and the after paragraph spacing, and then just continuing on with what we have. So at this point, I would like those two sections, my units of study and my monthly creativity topics to be heading one. And what you'll start to see on the left hand side is actually a built um, table of contents for the document. This is a clickable live document that lets you move around based on those pieces. If you don't believe me, you can go to insert and you can actually insert a table of contents that will use any heading formats that you have inside your document. So if you just made it look like a heading by bolding it, making it larger, changing the font style, that won't do this. You actually have to make them heading ones and heading twos, and it continues to build these kind of sets. The last thing that I ask students to do is to make their documents pageless. These are all going to be online. I also ask them to change the comments. So changing the coloring makes it easier for you to find it in Google Docs that way later on. It makes it easier for you to submit it whenever you need to. Here you can see the live documents and the links. And every time you hit the refresh button, after you've added something, it'll be there. Again, thank you for watching. If you're one of my students, tell me in class that this was helpful. If you just happen to find this while you were searching through YouTube, check out some of my other uh, videos relating to Google Docs or even Adobe Express creativity. Hope you have a great day and enjoy your time inside of Google Docs.